you may be seated. Um. The court is now back in session. The floor is once again given to the legal lawyers for civil parties to continue their document presentation. And you may proceed. Um, thank you, Mr. President. Once again, good morning, Mr. President, your honors, and everyone in and around the courtroom. The next document is D22 slash 1248 at EAN in Khmer 00. Five two three four four nine. This civil party stated that between nineteen seventy and nineteen seventy five, I was a student at Tultumpung Primary School in Phnom Penh. And on 17 April 1975, my family was was ordered by the Khmer Rouge to leave Phnom Penh. I could not recall the address of my house. They made an announcement for all Phnom Penh city dwellers to leave for three days because the Khmer Rouge needed to get rid of the enemy. The Khmer Rouge also said that if anyone refused to leave, they would be accused of being enemy and would be shot dead. My family facing such a situation, and my father, Chai Kan Yud, took my mother and the seven children to leave town. We took the road towards Tong Mien Chai and we reached Cham Chai and then we head to National Road Number 3 and we stay at Ong Ta Proj Pagoda for three months. A soldier of the Khmer Rouge, I cannot recall the name, told my father that you, the 17 every people, are to be transferred to live in Sector 4 by Onka. And next morning, all the families who had stayed at Ong Ta Pro Pagoda gathered their belongings and children and boarded the vehicle under the watchful eyes of Khmer Rouge. And we went crossing Phnom Penh along National Road Number 5 toward Krolaung Luk area. And I cannot recall the exact names of the village and commune in Mung district, Batambong province. The Khmer Rouge ordered my family to live in a village called Jam Roa village in Tumleng Cooperative. Cooperative was equivalent to a commune and it was in Mung district, Batambong province. One month after, my mother, Su Eng, delivered a baby named Tum Kam Sot. My family was forced to eat communally to work together, and the adults were separated from the children. The males were separated from the females, and the female youth were separated from the male youths and the children would be left to one side, and we all had to eat separately. Further down, the, the civil party stated that the Khmer Rouge forced us to work hard in beating them, digging dikes and canals, plowing, transplanting rice, and engage in plantation for planting potato and corns, etc. They monitored the activities of the new people 
as they refer to us as the 17 April people. They monitor us every day, regardless of the time of the day, day or night. Often, we were asked by the Khmer rules about our background, and the living condition became worse from day to day as we did not have sufficient food to eat and we had to work from 8 to 10 hours per day. During a meeting, they talked about the principle of the revolutionary politics and that we should not say anything bad about Anka and that we should get rid of ourselves of the previous regime's fashions or colored clothing and we should dress only in black. The next civil party applicant, that is document D22-3129, on page in uh, Khmer, which is 00560829, stated the following. In 1975, my family were evacuated from Phnom Penh and all the people had to travel on foot. From that day, members of my family separated to various places. In December 1975, my younger sister named Paul Samran, whose husband was of a Thai origin, and who was a colonel were taken and killed. That is, the husband and wife were killed at Boko Mountain, Kampot Province. Also in December 1975, my mother-in-law were killed. She was accused of being a feudalist in Batambong Province. As for my father, named Pichopan, were killed in the Chibamon District, Kampong Spu Province. One year later, some of my family members died. By mid-1977, my elder brother's family were taken and killed by Onka. They were shot dead after they grabbed their, background, their backgrounds. I would also like to clarify that my husband was a, a Lunar government uh, soldiers, he bore the rank of a colonel. Five or six members of his family died in the pool of blood. In late 1977, my, my nephew, who was about 13 to 14 years old, and there were eight of them all together, were taken and killed. In fact, the theory and the application of if you dig the grass, you need to clean the roots were turned out to be truth. Although I starved, I was hungry, I tried not to allow them to know about my background. I tried to work hard, engaging in all kinds of work as well as I could survive. Another civil party applicant, that is document D22-3789, and on the Khmer EN 00 stated the following. On 14 April 1975, the Khmer Rus took control of Kampong Spu province. At that time, I fled to Phnom Penh by a military plane of the Lunol regime, and we paid 7 G of gold each to go to Phnom Penh. I live with my aunts and 
uncle near Tansu Theater. And on 17 April 1975, the Khmer Rouge took full control of Phnom Penh, and at around 2 p.m. that day, the Khmer Rouge made an announcement for all city dwellers to evacuate immediately in order to avoid the bombardment from Americans. My family went on foot day and night and stayed along National Road Number 4 for several nights before we arrived in Don at a village of unknown commune, but it was located in Kampung Spu province. As a youth, the Khmer Rouge asked me to carry rice for the youth who were bidding down at them. I stayed there for one and a half months, then my family was further evacuated by train to Bonti Minche province. And then the base people brought ox carts to take us to live in Tien Kam village, Hal commune, Prehnit Preh district, Bonti Minche province. They separated me from my family to live in the children's unit to pick the rice and to build dams and dice. And I received one bowl of rice during the harvest season and one ladle of porridge during the rainy season, and I was emaciated. Some people who made minor mistakes were accused. They were tied into a line, killed, and buried in a pit. And that was under the pretext that they were sent for education, but in fact, they had been killed. They use a phrase that there is no gain in keeping. The next civil party applicant, that is document D22 slash 247, and on the Khmer page 0027, my apology 004214. Eight, nine, stated the following. On 17 April 1975, when the Khmer entered Phnom Penh, they forced all the people to leave towns and to, leave and to move to the countryside, and if anyone refused, they would be shot dead. As we were scared, on the next day, my family forced to leave our house with regret. At that time, I only, I just delivered my baby, and I was about uh, 10 days after the de delivery, and I could not bring any belonging with me. We went toward the west along National Road Number 4 toward our native village in Kampung Spu province. Along the road, I made a lot of difficulties as I recently delivered my baby and other children were still young. There was no, no water and there was no sufficient food. There was no proper shelter for us. And often my younger children as well as other children cried out of fatigue as they walked under the heat of the sun and as they were hungry for food. I saw a lot of dead bodies along the road. And when I could no longer move, my husband made a makeshift cart to pull us and we stayed under the shade of a tree along the road. And when we reached Thanol Tateng Market, which is the border between Kandal and Kampung Spu provinces, we headed toward the north in the direction of Udong Market. 
because we had to hide our the, the biography of my husband who was a military police. That's why we did not want to go to our native village. When we arrived at the north of Badang Market near Bangkana Pagoda in Odong district, we were asked by the Khmer Rouge to stay there temporarily. We stayed there for about three months, and in September 1975, my family, together with other families who were evacuated from Phnom Penh, were sent further by the Khmer Rouge by vehicles toward Pusat province. And upon arrival at Pusat province, we were asked to stay in Wat Luong Cooperative in Bakan district. As they considered us the 17th April people, the living condition was terrible. There was no proper shelter. As for the food ration, they only distributed one can of rice per day for five to six people. So that in order for us to survive, we had to pick leaves from the wild trees mixed with our gruel. And about two months after, they asked us to eat communally in the cooperative, and even it became even more pitiful because of the thin gruel, and we could only have one or two ladles of uh, gruel. In early 1976, members of my family were separated. My husband was sent to the male's unit and worked far away from the cooperative, and my two children, Rod Runarep and Rod Pisat, were sent to the children's unit, and they had to work as adults, and they did not engage in any study. And as for myself, since I hate young children, I was allowed to stay in the cooperative. But I could not go and look after my children. I had to engage in the agricultural work, in building dams, digging canals, and I only returned at around 9 to 10 p.m. before I could see my children who were taken care of by other women. Occasionally, I saw my husband, and around July 1976, my husband's unit was transferred to work near the Wat Luong Cooperative where I stayed, but I did not see my husband coming along. One day, I saw a man, whose name I cannot recall, who worked with my husband, wore my husband's shirt. I asked him for my husband's whereabout. Initially, he did not dare to say anything to me, but later on, he whispered to me that my husband, whose name was Rod Ho, was arrested by the militia, and he was taken and killed about a few days ago without any reason. Upon hearing the news, I was shocked, almost fainted, and, but I did not dare ask anything further. From that day onward, I lost hope in my life, but I struggled so that I could see the faces of my younger children. Due to insufficient food, due to lack of medicine, and without proper care, About four, in, period, in the period of about four months, that day from September to December 1976, my six children died of malnutrition, one after another, until all died. Sometimes two of them died in one month. Further down, the Civil Party African also stated that the people in the cooperative uh, disappeared subsequently and some died of disease. And when my husband and children all died, I almost became crazy. Uh, 
another civil party applicant in the document D22 slash 2818 and on the Khmer page 00556891 stated the following before 1975 I lived near Tutampu Market in Phnom Penh and further down, it reads, On the 17th April 1975, I was at home with my seven children and my husband, not named Me Tum, who was still working at the Pese Song Trail near the old stadium in Phnom Penh. At that time, I heard again fires and shelling from all directions toward Phnom Penh city and to the main, some of the main areas in Phnom Penh. As heard on the broadcast and various other radios, I knew that the Khmer Rouge clique who dressed in black with the scarf around their neck entered the city and after it became a bit subdued, I, heard, I saw the Khmer Rouge enter to the pool market. There were a lot of soldiers, there were big and small vehicles, there were armored vehicles, and later on, some Khmer Rouge walked on the road, and some were on a vehicle making an announcement on a mobile mi microphone that we instruct fathers, mothers, brothers, and sisters all to leave the house without bringing any belonging, and that you would leave only for seven days. This is to avoid the American bombardment. The Khmer Rouge used a wooden board indicating the direction for the people to, to head to that direction and we were not allowed to return. At that time, my, I and my seven children evacuated, were evacuated by the Khmer Rouge and we separated from my husband until today. We forced to leave our house and while en route, I saw the Khmer Rouge kill people on the spot as those people disobeyed the order to leave their houses. My seven children and myself, together with several other people, walked on foot along National Road Number 1, that is the road leading to Nhat Lương, and we crossed a bridge. The bridge name was Chiroi Ta Ao, and we continued our journey and while on route, I saw people died along that road number one. Some died while sitting on a chair, and some corpses were swollen. When we reached Chibampo Theater and any road pagoda, we stayed there for seven days. And I saw the Khmer Rouge making an announcement that whoever used to have a rank or uh, used to work or have a role in the previous regime, so register their name with Anka, and Anka would send them to engage in their previous job. There was one Khmer Kraum man, whose name I cannot recall, who travels together, together with me, and because of the pitiful situation, And in fact, he had no rank or position registered his name. And also, I saw another neighbor, my neighbor by the name of Sruit, who had uh, some rank, although I did not know exactly what rank he was. 
rush to register his name in order to receive uh, some like O. Oh. And after the registration, hundreds of uh, people were ordered by the Khmer Rouge to dress uh, nicely in a queue along National Road number one in order to make their trip back to Phnom Penh to welcome uh, some like O. Oh. My seven children and myself continued our journey further with other people. Another civil party applicant, that is document D22-40, and on page with Khmer Ear and 00323606 stated the following. On 17 April 1975, we were forced to leave Phnom Penh and the gunpoint. The Khmer Rouge soldiers told us that the Americans would drop bombs on the, onto the city and that we had to leave for a few days in order to avoid the bombardment. At that time, I was with my parents and my three children, age ranging from eight years old to five and to four, together with my younger brother and younger sister. A bit further down, that civil, civil party applicant stated that when we arrived at the base, we were forced to engage in heavy work to engage in plantation or to clear the forest. Every day I started working from the beginning until late. I was not given time to rest, and we were under the watchful eyes of the Khmer Rouge uh, militia. I was afraid. Although when I was sick or fatigued, I did not dare to rest. Another civil party applicant in document D22-35 and on the Khmer page with EAN 00323529 stated the following. On 17 April 1975, I lived in Phnom Penh with my five sisters and three brothers and my parents near the railway station. At the dormitory for the railway station workers. A little bit after noon, my parents told us that the Khmer Rouge soldiers ordered us to leave the house temporarily because the Americans would drop bombs. A bit further down, she stated that along the road, the Khmer Rouge would instruct us on which direction that we needed to head to. And the Khmer Rouge soldiers who carried AK-47 rifles did not hesitate to kill anyone who were traveling and who did not obey their directions or instructions. I clearly recall that I saw I witnessed the killing in this fashion. Another civil party applicant in document D22-3751 and on Khmer P 
page with EAN my apology I moved to another civil party applicant that is civil party applicant in document D22 slash 2451 on the page with EAN in uh, Khmer zero zero five five one six two one who stated the following my name omitted age sixty three years old living in Praetom village to commune District, Kampot Province. My husband's name is Kat Lon, age 65, and we have five children. In 1970, my family lived in Phnom Penh. We were ordinary workers, and in 1975, when the Khmer Rouge attacked Phnom Penh, my family and I returned to our native village, and upon our arrival, our family was considered the 17 Imperial people, that is, the new people. At that time, the Khmer Rouge cadres confiscated all the jewelry that we had, and I did not have any means of raising my children, and the only means to survive was for me to exchange our clothes with the base people. The next civil party applicants that is in document D twenty two seventeen nine four on my page with EN zero zero five three five three three four stated the following in nineteen seventy five the Khmer Rouge cadres evacuated my mother and my relatives namely my aunts and uncles and nephews, seven, all seven of them, to Anlongkai village, Trupangsdau commune, Rumdul district, Swairing province. And they forced m my relatives uh, to work extremely hard. And when they fell sick, uh, they did not have access to medicine, and they were given small ration of food. Uh, because they alleged my relatives of being the 17 April people. Mr. President, I don't have uh, many more civil parties to uh, present here, but uh, the next civil party, D22, slash 3461, relevant ERN in Khmer, zero, zero, Five six six three nine two. In this uh, civil party form, it reads: Three days following the 17th of April 1975, I was forced by the Khmer Rouge uh, to leave Phnom Penh City. We had to march out of Phnom Penh City along National Road Number no. Five and we had to cross the river somewhere around kilometer six, and we were not allowed to bring any belongings uh, with us because the Khmer Rouge told us that we would leave for only three days in order that they could reorganize the city, and those who resisted leaving the city were um, threatened at gunpoint, and some of them were also kill along the street as well. So I was uh, forced uh, to follow um, along the street. And I had to walk all the way to Skun and Jihai. And then finally, I reached Vihir Sur commune, 
Sach Kandal district, Kandal province. And the journey took me around 15 days. When I reached Vihir Sur village, uh, I and my sister lived with our relatives by the name of Kham Niang for five days. And then my relatives asked uh, them to leave uh, the place to Krochma district. When we reached uh, Krochma, they evacuated us uh, and assembled us with other 17 APRO people. And a, a few days after that, uh, they sent us to a new location by the name of Chumlu, which was uh, widespread with malaria over there. In Chumlu commune, there were around 100 houses there. They were full of 17 APRO people who had been evacuated from other places. And at that time, they ordered my husband uh, to clear the bamboo uh, forest every day. And I was asked uh, to collect rice. But as for the food rations, we were given only half a tin of uh, rice. And it was not sufficient for us. And the next civil party in document D22 slash 231. Relevant ERN in Khmer, 00, 42, 43, 13. This civil party stated that prior to the 17th of April 1975, my family had lived in Phnom Penh, somewhere north of Orisai Market, near Onko Cinema. I got married to my husband by the name of Ok Chir. He was a former soldier of Lono regime, and I was a housewife. We had uh, seven uh, children. Uh, five of them were uh, males, and two were females. Following the 17th of April 1975, the Khmer Rouge, dressed in black, entered Phnom Penh. At the times, they shoot guns into the air, and they pointed guns at uh, Phnom Penh dwellers, forcing them to leave the city. They evacuated to the countryside on the pretext that we would uh, leave for only a few days. Because of the fear, uh, we had to leave the city um, in complying with their orders, and we had to carry our belongings along because we did not have any means to transport. And we had to leave the city barefooted. We did not have any means of transport at all. We had to march out of the city on foot. And some of my young kids carried some uh, stuff uh, belongs. And we had to march out of the city along with other city dwellers uh, toward the eastern part of the country in complying with their orders. When we reached Nhat Lung, we uh, went uh, through the uh, secondary road uh, uh, in order to uh, go to my husband's uh, hometown. And we, at that time, hoped that we would meet our relatives in Takao province. We had to travel on foot for about two months uh, until we reached the target. We, uh, the journey was horrendous because I had just delivered my baby for the last, for, for two months. And we had to travel barefooted for two months under the sunlight, and we did not have sufficient food to eat or water to drink. I felt very pity on my young children because they were crying all along uh, the ways because of hunger. Uh, when we reached my husband's uh, hometown in Samraung uh, district, Takao province, I could not recall the exact location where we were located at that time, but my family were accused of the 17 uh, people approach and we were uh, discriminated 
by the base people over there. And as for my relatives uh, from my husband's side also discriminated against us, they did not provide us uh, the same ration of food as uh, the base people received. The next uh, civil party, D22 slash 2751, Relevant EAN in Khmer 0055 stated that on the 17th of April 1975, my family lived in Phnom Penh City. My husband was a Lonnol soldiers. On that day, the Khmer Rouge liberated Phnom Penh, and three days after the liberation, uh, they started to evacuate people out of Phnom Penh city. At that time, the black clothes uh, soldiers uh, shoot into the air, threatening people almost everywhere in the city. In certain instances, they killed people instantly uh, nearby my houses, uh, saying that anyone resisted their order would be killed. Then they continue to announce that those who came from any country villages had to go back to those villages so that uh, the Khmer Rouge organization would uh, reorganize the city. On our journey out of Phnom Penh along National Road No. 2 uh, to my home village, I witnessed a lot of swollen corpses and it smelled terrible along the way. I uh, traveled for more than a month uh, in order to reach the place where we were supposed to be located. It was in Oansa village. My family stayed there for three days. Then they continued to send my family to Ta'am village, Girivong district, Takao province. My family stayed there for some times, and then those people call us the contemptible 17. And they force our families to work extremely hard. It was much harder than the base people. And they provided us much smaller ration of food. If uh, they were given one bowl of rice, we only got half a bowl of rice or cruel, rather. And the civil party also said uh, that her husband were uh, tortured uh, very harshly at Prayum Dane uh, before uh, he was brought for execution. The next civil party document, D-22, slash 519. A relevant ERN in Khmer 00496869 stated that in early 1976, after my father was killed, my families uh, were gathered by the Khmer Rouge soldier on a truck and we had to leave our village, and we had it for another village. The Khmer Rouge brought uh, trucks, uh, sea, um, trucks, and they uh, gather us in different trucks. The new uh, 17 people, April people, were on c certain trucks, and the base people were different trucks. And normally, the 17 people trucks were crowded and crammed. And along the way, uh, on National Road Number 3 uh, to Kampert Province, when we reached Boko Valley, there were seven trucks carrying 17 April uh, people, and they turned into the steep valley, and then they dumped all the seven truck, uh, people on the seven truck into the valley. And as for the trucks carrying the base people, there were three of those trucks, and uh, they uh, took them to Tukmih district. And my family, who uh, were among the uh, base people on the three trucks, uh, we were 
sent to Tukmi uh, District Kampo Province. The next civil party, D22 slash uh, 36-23. Relevant year and in Khmer, 00-56-78. The civil party stated that prior to 1975, I was the uh, lone old soldier residing in Kothom village, Ang district, Kandal province. Up until 1975, when the Khmer Rouge uh, um, conquered the lone old soldier, I uh, had to uh, give up my job and I had tried to uh, hide my identity. Uh, when the Khmer Rouge uh, took over the power, uh, my family were evacuated, uh, telling us that Anka would organize the country and transform the country into socialism. And they asked the people to move uh, to the northwestern uh, zone of the country. So at that time, our family were forced to move out uh, on foot, and we had to carry our belongings uh, by ourselves uh, without any means of transport at all. And it took us several uh, weeks in order to reach Banti Menchei province. Back then, it was in Battambong province. Uh, we had to leave uh, uh, Kothom uh, district, and we had to walk along the way to Pung Chnang, and we stopped over there uh, for a few days, and then Angka convened a meeting of uh, both new and old people. And one of the uh, Khmer Rouge cadres um, told us that we had to abandon our self-interest. We had to um, give up our old mentality uh, from the capitalist regime. We had to get rid of the, this mentality. Anka would reorganize the society so that we would live in a society of equality. There would not be any poor or rich. We would live in a, a clean socialism. There would not be any exploiting class or we had to uh, give our properties into the collective properties. So our society would not have any uh, classes anymore. Uh, we had to work using our labor. We had to do it automatically. We would not create any class or exploiting class or nobody would be identified as rich or poor. So Anka divided people into two groups, one uh, to the uh, southwest zone, the other group uh, to the uh, northwest zone. And we, uh, our families, were evacuated to the northwest zone, and we were located in Wersbo, uh, Battambong province. Now it is uh, Bante Menche province. When we uh, arrived in that village, uh, the base people consider us as the 17 uh, people, 17 April people, or new people. And Anka at that time, uh, made us work with the base people. Another civil party, D22, slash 1414, stated that the relevant year and in Khmer, 00528133, During the rainy season and the um, a transplanting season, we were evacuated to Bakan District, Posad Province, and those people were considered the 17 APRO people. They were under surveillance by militiamen. My family were considered uh, the 17 APRO people as well. Wherever we went, uh, we were under uh, control. And they asked my relatives uh, again and again to find out what my family background was, particularly what my uh, parents uh, did in the past regime. And uh, he also continued to mention that uh, they were very good at uh, conducting 
uh, interview or questioning people. Uh, after all, uh, many people were lured into telling the truth, and the Khmer Rouge at that time uh, could find out uh, the uh, the true backgrounds of people, and then they would take uh, those people out in the truck um, away. Uh, this is going to be the last um, civil party form concerning the first and second population movement. This civil party document D22 slash 2470 relevant ERN in Khmer zero zero five five one eight five one the civil party stated that following the seventeenth of april nineteen seventy five the Khmer Rouge soldier evacuated my father and my relatives from Phnom Penh and we were located in uh, Bosai uh, village Kumpung Spu province which is my father's hometown. When I got to the hometown the cadres of the Khmer Rouge uh, gathered the 17 April people in one village that village known as a uh, new village or Pum Thmay, uh, and it was in Bosai uh, district of uh, Pusat province. This new village was uh, created named, uh, specifically for the 17 April people, and up until the 17, uh, up until November 1976, the Khmer Rouge cadre summoned my father at around six o'clock in the evening including other uh, 17 April people, uh, they wanted him and other 17 people April to plant potatoes. So they uh, uh, sent uh, the group uh, to plant the potato until uh, 10 p.m. at night. And following the planting of potatoes, they uh, arrested my father and tortured my my father, uh, they cut open my father's stomach and took his liver and cooked them. And after that, uh, they uh, appointed other militiamen in the village to uh, follow uh, my family members. They told our families that uh, we were from the previous regimes and they actually treated us very badly. And in 1976, they arrested my mother, my brothers and myself and they uh, detained all of us in Chere Opno, which was known as the um, region location and they forced my relatives, my mother, uh, to work uh, very hard and they never gave us sufficient uh, food and when we were sick, uh, we were not given any proper medicine other than the rabbit dunk medicine. And they uh, beat us and we never had proper shelter uh, to stay in and they forced us to work extremely hard and I I still have a four more uh, civil party forms relating to the situation at Tulpo Chre. Civil party D22 slash 1079 
0051841. The civil party stated that in April 1975, the Khmer Rouge soldier uh, took control of Bosat provincial town and they made an announcement in loudspeaker to order people to evacuate uh, the city. And they uh, also announced uh, for the former officials of the previous regime and doctors and teachers also. And they would ask those, they asked those people to uh, identify themselves and came up uh, to see uh, them. The uh, fathers of the civil party were summoned to a meeting in Pusat Provincial Hall. And then uh, when he went there, uh, he was taken on a truck and he disappeared. And as for the wife of uh, this victim, were also uh, killed uh, along with uh, her children in early 1977. Another civil party, D22 slash 1529, relevant year and in Khmer. Same, same. 0053, 0043. This civil party stated that in early April 1975, the Khmer Rouge uh, took control of Bosat province and they announced uh, the civil, uh, they announced for the civil servant uh, to uh, show up. And uh, those uh, civil servants who show up were taken on a truck at around uh, 10 o'clock in the morning, and those officials were eventually killed at Tuol Pochre, and many witnesses saw many uh, dead bodies uh, over there. Another civil party, D-22, slash 2011, Relevant year and in Khmer, 0054-1673. Seven, seven, civil party also stated that on the 18th of April 1975, uh, the uh, black clothes soldiers carrying arms uh, order the people to leave uh, their homes for three days in order to uh, welcome the prince. And as for the former officers uh, would be taken away for uh, education. Those who uh, signed up uh, in the registration form of the Khmer Rouge were taken away in the trucks and they were eventually killed because there were so many dead bodies found at Tul Po Chre in Bakan District, Posat Province. The next civil party, D22 slash 15.57. The civil party mentioned in the victim information form on the relevant year and page 0053-0391. In 1975, he was a former commando soldier. We live in Pasya uh, Bakan district, Bosat province. When the Khmer Rouge uh, took over, he surrendered and he were asked uh, to leave the village. And we were at that time uh, the 
divide it into two groups. Uh, one was the uh, 17 APRO people, the other was the base people, and we were constantly asked uh, to uh, tell Onka whether or not they were the officers of the previous regimes. One of uh, his brother was a former captain of the soldier, were taken away uh, to Tulpochre, and he was executed over there. I would like to now raise another uh, civil party which I have not mentioned uh, before, uh, Civil Party D22 slash 32, EN00279757. The civil party stated that prior to 1975, my family lived in Orsay, around Orsay Market. When the Khmer Rouge entered Phnom Penh, the Khmer Rouge evacuated my family to somewhere around Borei Moroi Knong in Po Chintong. In 19, in late 19, it is not clear. That my family were again evacuated to uh, from Po Chintong to Bakan District, Posat Province. In Bakan District, my elder sister were killed by the Khmer Rouge a soldier. As for my younger sister, she was, she died because of disease. I saw the dead body of my sister and her body was swollen. And in 1978, my mother had to uh, steal the uh, food for the pig to uh, give to my uh, mother. And my uh, father was then found stealing this, and he was uh, called for uh, re-education. But then uh, he was released, and then he went there again uh, to steal uh, this food, and then when he was caught again, he were uh, frog march my fathers and my mother for execution. Uh, before uh, they killed my fathers, they uh, asked my father to kneel down in front of a pit uh, before they uh, kill uh, him. And in before uh, they were killed, uh, one of the Khmer Rouge soldiers asked uh, their partitions that uh, they would, uh, he would uh, kill my father. And my, uh, at that time, my, uh, my mother asked uh, me uh, to uh, stay away from the uh, Khmer Rouge and uh, they uh, my mother did not want me to stay around, but then I could not have watching, and my um, and eventually I was raped by all the Khmer Rouge uh, soldier. And then when I went back, uh, one of the militiamen in my village asked me to uh, run away and join other cooperatives. And then I uh, could. I, I decided to escape to another cooperative, but then uh, they found out uh, that I uh, was living with other cooperatives, and one of the militiamen went uh, to uh, find me in that cooperative, and then they threatened me for th my life, and then they continued to stay uh, with me and uh, all along uh, the period. Mr. President, uh, that is all for the victims, uh, uh, civil parties, uh, whose statement was recorded in the victim information form. Uh, of course, we have many other civil parties, but I don't think that the Times uh, permits me to raise all of those uh, civil parties for uh, the proceeding before us now, the President. Thank you. Uh, the time is now appropriate for the lunch adjournment. The chamber will adjourn now and resumes at 1.30 this afternoon. And this afternoon, the chamber will...
uh, hand over to the defense teams, beginning with the defense team for Mr. Nguyen Chia uh, to make observation or objection to the key documents presented by the prosecutors as well as the lead co-lawyers for the civil parties who have presented uh, numbers of documents concerning the uh, population movement phase one and phase two as well as the execution site at Tour Portray. And also the um, document concerning the military structure of the Democratic Cambodia presented by the uh, lead co-lawyer for the civil parties this morning. And the chamber may grant uh, the opportunity for the uh, defense team uh, to raise other documents as well as indicated in uh, memo of the TC uh, E223 slash 3 paragraph 4 as well as the uh, document concerning uh, as for the uh, document concerning the JCE uh, that will be heard at an appropriate time in the future. The court is now adjourned.